Namaskara. This is Manjanath Murthy from Know Your Yoga. Today, along with Chinmay, I'll be teaching you a step-by-step -step guide towards achieving Chakrasana. So let's get right into the video. Chakrasana is one of the advanced backbends that most people would like to learn and perform but are not sure what the right approach is. It is an excellent posture no doubt for the spinal flexibility, but it requires a certain amount of flexibility and strength in the muscles of quadriceps, hip joints, the shoulders and the chest, not to mention core mobility, a term not often used or understood. I've come across a lot of people taking the wrong approach towards performing this pose and not minding how it might impact their body. The most common mistake is depending on the wall to perform the pose or relying on the yoga instructor's assistance to do it rather than understanding and taking a safer and methodical approach. Going in a sequence that's safe that is warming up the body by doing any warm-ups which uses the muscles of the quadriceps, hips and anything that increases the flow of blood in the body. These are to be done irrespective of what asanas you perform at any given time. To accompany these, there are basic backbending asanas that one must perform before trying any advanced backbending asanas and you can see them in my backbend video which I've linked in the description where I explain in detail the approach towards backbending for beginners. The next set of stretches are what I call as dynamic stretches which particularly targets the regions that assist us in performing chakrasana. We do them in repetition to increase the range of motion. These are also included in the video which I mentioned but since these are a must I'm showing them again. Each of the practices you see can be performed up to 10 times as per your capacity. Keep in mind that how well you breathe here translates to how well you breathe in Chakrasana. The forward-backward bending movement is done by almost everyone in their asana practice, but this is where so many people may go wrong. Bending as you see here with knees bent, hips not locked, shoulders and sternum not lengthened. This should be corrected by lengthening the chest and shoulders, keeping hips firm and bending with the chest facing the ceiling. You need not bend as far as she is bending, but this is how you should be performing the pose. The same technique has to be followed even when you perform alternate and forward-backward bend too, that is maintain the hips parallel with your ankle all the while feet planted firmly on the floor. If you aim going deep instead of going the right way, it can go wrong in many ways even when it looks like you are going farther than the correct way. The next prerequisite asana is Parshwatanasana, which also needs to be done in a specific manner. Where one might go wrong is the placement of the feet which in turn will make the hips go unparallel and one might also bend either of their knees. All of this needs to be rectified by keeping the feet in line with the respective hip and make sure the sternum and hips face ahead and don't bend either of the knees while performing the movement. If you have got both of this right, you can practice the next movement with both the hands in a similar fashion that is keeping both the knees straight, raising arms with inhalation and bending back with exhalation. All of the back bends start with inhalation and proceed with exhalation so you can maintain continuous breathing. Even here, don't do the bending knee method just to go far in the bend. Once you are done with this, I recommend performing a few static stretches like Virasana, Supta Virasana and Setu Bandhasana which further help in making your Chakrasana attempt better. Those who can perform a specific variation of Anjaneyasana which gives a deeper stretch to the hips and quadriceps can go ahead and do that as well. If you are a total beginner, this is how your chakrasana might look like and that's fine. Keep practicing everything I've told so far and then attempt. With good practice, you'll get to the level I'm about to show. Not just beginners, even intermediate practitioners get stuck here by not doing a specific movement and that's what I'm about to show now. You see, when you raise your body up and get into chakrasana, you won't necessarily use your muscles full potential by not adjusting your legs. For this reason, you have to raise your heels up once you raise your body so your upper body can reach to a position where your shoulders align with the fingers of the wrist. From here, you can take the legs back further and lower the heels which intensifies and improves the asana even further. Now we proceed further on how to do standing chakrasana but using the wall like you saw in the beginning of the video is not helpful. Instead, I would like you to get into chakrasana from Ardha Purvottanasana like you are seeing here. Perform this from both the hands. Similarly, also learn to get into Chakrasana from Chamatkarasana but during both follow the important technique of raising heels and adjusting the legs. I 
I am boldly saying not to depend on wall, but the ones who don't use the wall to perform chakrasana usually do chakrasana this way, which helps you in getting into the pose, but you will be weakening the quadriceps and not learn controlling of hips. I recommend you doing Ardha Chakrasana like how I have shown in the beginning of this video and then release the hands one after the other and then start bending the knees to reach the floor. It won't be a smooth landing but that's where consistent practice matters. The more you practice the easier and better you'll land. And the sooner you learn the wall or someone's assistance is not needed, you eliminate the fear of doing standing Chakrasana. In case you need to rely on wall, this is what you need to be doing first. Enter into Ardha Chakrasana with your back facing the wall. From there, reach your hands one after the other and straighten the arms. This helps in keeping your elbow properly extended and also helps you in keeping the hips in line with the legs, which is what restricts most from doing a proper back bend. After learning this, you may do the Chakrasana with wall support, but try using one hand as support only once to go down. Coming back from Chakrasana with support also this way, but those who wouldn't want to use the wall to come up, they need to master the variations of Chakrasana which plays vital role in giving the strength to push your hips or knee to a position where the upper body feels light enough to come back up. There are certain exercises one can do to come back up too. Let me know in the comments if you want to see them. Some of the things to keep in mind is to practice other intermediate backbending postures like Ustrasana to improve Chakrasana and vice versa. And as like any other postures, don't overdo and when you know you've been doing same postures repeatedly, it's better to complement the posture with a forward bend and a twist. Thank you for watching this video. If what you saw is helpful, a subscription is appreciated and do like and share this video. Shubhamastu.